Look, if you've been with the channel for long enough, you'll know that there are a few things that I just can't stand. One of them just happens to be bugs and arachnids of most any nature. Yes, I know that they're good for the planet. Do you really think that I care about that when I'm looking at one, listening to one, or having to endure their existence as a whole? Well, no. And to make you feel my pain, here now are 20 insects that you won't believe actually exist. You're welcome. Number 20. Creatinotos ganges. Yes, that's a really rather scientific name that I'm surprised I got through on one try, but hey, I don't name the bugs. And no matter what it's called, this bug will give you nightmares. But to boil it down to a more simple title, this is a moth, a very special moth, and it's hardly the worst one on the list, but it is absolutely weird. Found in the northern regions of Western Australia, the Northern Territory, and Queensland, along with all across Southeast Asia, this moth has evolved in an ingenious way to find a mate, even when they're several kilometers away. <laughs> Which, if you think about, isn't all that bad, because when you're an animal, no matter what type, mating is one of your more basic instincts, and you need to find that mate no matter what. And that's where I begin talking about what is known as the hair pencil. Because these are things that are used by the males of the species to send a certain kind of aroma into the air, and to say that it has an effect on its species would be an understatement. When females are exposed, the chemicals act as both an aphrodisiac and a tranquil not really sure how I feel about the second one, but when males of the same species get a whiff, they serve as a handy repellent to drive the competition away. It is a clever and quite creepy thing, as it ensures that it gets a mate while making sure that the other males of its kind don't swoop in on its turf. But here's where things get really weird. The appendages that do this, they're inflatable, and they come out of the moth's abdomen when they're needed and retract back when they're not. I'm fine with just just not knowing any of that. Thank you very much. Let's move on. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 19. Picasso Moth. Now I'm going to stick with moths for a little bit longer because to tell you the truth, I can actually handle moths. Sure, they can be annoying when they're flying around a light and all up in your face, but most times they're pretty harmless, and sometimes they're actually more beautiful than butterflies, which often get all the credit for beauty. Enter the Picasso moth, which is found in parts of northeastern India and southeast Asia, so don't feel bad if you've never heard of it before. Take a look at its wings and tell me if you think that you can guess why it's called the Picasso Moth. Hint, it's not a trick question. Yes indeed, those wings are so very colorful that they very much resemble a kind of painting that Picasso might have done, or other artists to be fair, but Picasso is the most famous amongst them, so why not label it after that? There's honestly not a whole lot of information about the moth, so it makes what it is so very mysterious and unique, because while we've seen all sorts of insects, such as butterflies, be able to have beautiful wings and bodies beyond what's normal, this one takes the cake. Because the question is, why did they get their wings to look like that? Just as much as how did they get them to look like that? Now remember, certain butterflies and moths have patterns on their wings to make themselves seem like predators instead of prey, and that all makes sense, but this one not so much, and that's what makes it so hard to believe, because we essentially have a moth that is a living painting. Number 18. Jewel Beetle. If you can't tell, I'm building myself up to a more over-the-top insect, so bear with me a little bit longer. It's just not easy for me to talk about such things in a video. So with that in mind, I'll talk about beetles. You'll likely know that beetles have a shell around their bodies that's meant to protect them, and it is a vital part of their body. But with the jewel beetle, they take this to a new level. As the defining feature of the jewel beetle is a bright iridescent color on its body, these colors range from reds to greens to blues and many shades in between, the color is not due to pigments in the shell, but due to light diffraction by microscopic structures within the body itself. 
So the shell, well, it's meant to reflect light on a microscopic level and make them shine like a jewel. How it got it to do that? Well, nobody may ever know the answer to that question, but what we can say is that there are plenty of people who do enjoy this bug. We say that because in some cultures they actually take the shell of the beetle and use it as decoration. Given the various color schemes that it has, I can see why they would do that, even if I'd never want to do that in my own home. But it's not just decoration that they're known for. Giant jewel beetles are a common protein-rich delicacy in the diets of many rural communities in South Africa. Bon Appetit! Number 17. Goody Sapphire Tarantula now, I'm finally getting into something that I really don't want to talk about, but I'm going to do it anyways. Behold, the Goody Sapphire Tarantula. Why do I not want to talk about it? Well, because it's a spider, and spiders suck, even if they are sapphire colored. It should be noted that the Goody Sapphire Tarantula is actually the only spider within its own genus to have such a color, which does indeed make it stand out from the crowd that it finds itself in. Another interesting fact, if spiders can have such things, is that for their young, they don't start out as blue, rather they start out as lavender, and then as they grow older, they get more and more blue as they shed their previous color. A definitely unique thing, or at least unique enough to talk about. Now, as this is a tarantula, you no doubt are asking for something to know about. It's bite. Yes, the Goody Sapphire Tarantula does bite, and yes, it does have venom, but I do have good news and bad news for you on that front. Which one would you like first? The good news? Well, the Goody Sapphire Tarantula is actually known to flee from confrontation, and most bites that it does are dry, which means that they don't use their venom. Furthermore, no fatalities have ever been recorded with this spider, but if you do get a venom bite, the symptoms could be mild pertaining to swelling or lumps lasting for a week or a little severe depending on the nature of the bite. Now I'm grateful this spider isn't worse like others of its kind, however it is still a spider in the end. Number 16. Violin Beetle Behold the Violin Beetle. Would you like to guess why it's named that? Well, I'll give you a few moments if you want to phone a friend or perhaps poll the audience. I really hope you got that who wants to be a millionaire reference. Regardless of all that nonsense, these beetles possess a flat leaf shaped shiny black or brown body with distinctive violin shaped translucent elytra, thus why they're called what they're called. <laughs> And this characteristic mimicry protects them against predators, while their flat-shaped body allows them to dwell in soil cracks or under the bark and leaves of trees. And for all good measure, the length of certain appendages and the way that they look kind of makes them look like a violin, and that's why people call them the violin beetle. It's honestly rather cool. They've evolved in such a way that their bodies and their sound are such that they can ward off predators without drawing too much attention to themselves overall. Even I I could admit that when a creature is clever, it's pretty awesome. But wait, there's more, because they have another defense mechanism within them that is very special. In this case, I'm talking about how they actually have a kind of poison acid. If something gets too close, they'll spray them and then they really regret striking the wrong chord with this beetle. Get it? Wrong chord? Like the musical term? Violin? Anyways, the point is that violin beetles do have some cool things to be known for, and that's something to talk about. About. Number 15. Green Milkweed Grasshopper. Next up, I have a creature that honestly many of you may know about in one form or another, and that's the green milkweed grasshopper. This may seem like a regular grasshopper, but don't be fooled. It's a very special specimen due to its size, wings, and how much bigger one gender is compared to the other. By that, I mean that in many animal species, the males are larger than the females, but the green milkweed grasshopper is one of many out there in which the females are larger than the male. So unlike certain humans, male green milkweed grasshoppers don't mind big strong women. 
Now, that being said, the green milkweed grasshopper is not exactly the most popular insect out there, not the least of which is because they can be viewed as a threat to certain crops. Not as much as other creatures to be clear, but it can be quite damaging for one simple reason, it's because they breed like mad. On one hand, it's not exactly a bad thing, as it means they're able to withstand certain dangers to their population, which includes being devoured en masse by predators, or having their habitats destroyed by various people and organizations and so on. They have such numbers that it would take a whole lot to whittle them down, and unlike certain other animals on this list, you won't have to fear the green milkweed grasshopper unless a swarm of them may overtake you, in which case you're on your own because I'm out of here. Number 14. Giant Malaysian Leaf Insect one of the more clever things that insects do, and yes I'm praising insects again but don't let it go to your head, is that they seem to understand their environment more than certain other animal species, and that insight allows them to find ways to blend in with them over time so that they can overcome the obstacle that is being someone's lunch. Which brings me to talk about the giant Malaysian leaf insect. Now if you think about it, there are honestly several insects out there in the world that have modeled themselves in part or in whole after leaves, branches, and more. But for the giant Malaysian leaf insect, well, just look at the thing. It doesn't only look like a leaf, it is basically one in everything but name and the extra body that it has under its leafy shell. They're found most abundantly in the West Malaysian tropics, which is why you've likely never seen one before for yourself, but there is more to it than that. These insects blend in so well into nature that the first one wasn't even found until 1984, and then the first male was only found a decade later. It's not really that hard to see why, because they're such perfect camouflage artists that you can't simply just find them, you almost have to run into them. To that end, there's still much about the insect that nobody knows, which includes how its reproduction cycle goes, and the full cycle of life still has a lot of spots missing. In 2021, it got a new genus, so there's still much that we don't know, but in a way, that's part of the fun, as we still have a lot to learn about our world. Number 13. Hercules Beetle now I'll show you one of the largest insects in all of the world, the Hercules beetle, which as you can see has a very impressive frame and massive prongs that come out of its body. There are lots of things that you might know about this insect. For example, given its massive form, you would think that the creature would be one that prowls the world for many years, right? Well, no, not really. In fact, it's known to have a very short lifespan as an adult. Only about six months, in fact. That doesn't sound right. And and yet, that's what happens. The Hercules beetle spends most of its life as a larva, taking two years to fully grow into its massive adult form, and then it dies six months later. It's not as bad as a cicada cycle, but it is close. As for its horns, it's not hard to guess what those are for. Yes, they're used in battle, specifically mating battles, because you haven't seen creatures lock horns until you've seen two Hercules beetles go at it. Or maybe you have, there are a lot of pronged individuals out there, come to think of it. Regardless, Regardless, males famously fight to mate with females using their horns and can not only damage each other, but damage the female that they're fighting over. Would that be a form of tough love? I'm asking for a friend. And because of their distinct forms, it's very easy to say that they are an insect that you'd pretty easily recognize on sight. Number 12. Cuckoo Wasp you know one flew over the cuckoo's nest. It's a classic, and if you haven't seen it, what the hell are you doing with your life anyways? Well, this is one insect's nest that you better not get anywhere close to, because as you all hopefully know, wasps are a kind of insect that really suck. They're aggressive, they sting, and they can get pretty large, all factors of which put them high on my I don't want anything to do with list. It's a very full list if you can't tell. But here's why this wasp makes my list over 
other wasps because of how it gets its young born. You may think that like other insects, this is one that would have a hive and a swarm that it can rely on, but that's not exactly what happens. Cuckoo wasps are known as solitary creatures, which isn't too odd given the nature of insects at times. But the twist is that to be able to create its offspring, it will go into other insects' nests and deposit its own larva over whatever else is there. If it's an empty shell or slot, it'll just slip it in, seal it up, and none's the wiser. If it's inhabited, then they'll either eat the larva that's inside and replace it, or literally suffocate it in various forms so that it can be swapped out. That's all rather horrifying. That's why cuckoo wasps are known as external parasites, because they don't feed off of life in the traditional sense, but manipulate events so that they can get what they want, their offspring born, without them so much as lifting a finger. That's right, in the end, they're freeloaders of the insect world. Number 11. Wax-tailed bug. Due to insect nature and life, it's not uncommon for them to be able to develop all sorts of unique methods for fighting off threats or protecting themselves in a pinch. I've talked about a bug earlier that had an acid within it, and others produce various kinds of pheromones that can repel threats just with its smell alone. But for the wax-tailed bug, its defense mechanism is a bit more literal, as this is a bug that truly uses wax to get things to stay away from it. And that's just plain weird. To be clear, they don't collect wax from things like candles that would be more weird than this bug already is. Rather, this bug, also known as a hopper, likes to eat certain kinds of plants. Those plants secrete juices that the bug is able to turn into a wax that it can then dole out for various purposes. For example, if it's attacked by a predator, it'll shoot the wax out in order to prevent it from coming closer. But if it's in danger of falling, it can use its wax tail to cushion its fall just as clever, when it's laying eggs, it can use the wax to create a kind of protective shell which ensures that it's safe no matter what. Okay, but what if its tail falls off, you may ask? Which is a fair question. The answer is quite simple. It grows it back without a whole lot of issue. And because of the way it looks, it's able to further blend into the environment so that it doesn't always have to use its wax tail until it needs it. That's a multi-purpose tool right there. Number 10. Orchid Mantis don't you just hate it when animals get a bit too clever for their own good? Because when it comes to the orchid mantis, they really are quite clever, and it's really quite scary. So what did they do to draw our ire? Well, the answer to that would be they're really good at camouflaging. In this case, they've been able to augment their body over time so that they can perfectly blend into flowers by making themselves look like orchids. Sure, that's a really clever trick, but we don't need insects to be that smart. Because it targets pollen, the insect camouflages itself as a pink and white flower blossom. It's the only animal on record to do so, and do so effectively. So yes, as I've already shown you, many insects try and disguise themselves as flowers, leaves, and so on. They may call it a party trick, with the party being insects, but the orchid mantis uses it not only for defensive purposes, as it does have to fear predators, but it uses its mimicry in order to get prey, to think that nothing is wrong and then it devours them. So again, this is an insect that is a bit too smart for its own good, and I'm sure glad that it doesn't come in a bigger size. Number 9. Goliath Beetle now, it's safe to say that the larger the bug, the bigger reaction that a person is going to have to it. And in terms of all bug species in the world, one of the largest of the lot would be that of the aptly named Goliath beetle, which ranks amongst the largest via size, bulk, and weight, though the Hercules beetle is actually larger to be clear. The plus side of this insect is that the Goliath beetle resides solely in Africa. Specifically, they live in tropical forests on the continent, so if you're not not too close to that region, you're only going to see this thing in videos like this one, or even at the zoo. Furthermore, they're not actually aggressive to other creatures in a predatory sense, their diet primarily consisting of sap from trees as well as fruit. The male goliath beetle can reach over 4 inches in length, 
with the Hercules beetle being seven, and it can weigh up to 3.5 ounces. In the larva state, at least, they actually become lighter as adults. Females are slightly smaller and lighter than the males. One of the oddities of the Goliath, though, in terms of the wild, not much is actually known about their life cycle in regards to the larva stage. Number eight, thorn bug. Flowers have thorns, so why not bugs? At this point, let's embrace the madness. In this case, it's called the thorn bug because of a horn that grows not on its head, but rather from its spine. And due to this, the bug can place itself onto flowers and thus come off as nothing more than thorns, a very clever use of its camouflage. Thorn bugs are known for their unique ability to create multiple sounds for communication. Adult male thorn bugs fly from plant to plant, attempting to find a mate using Using certain sounds as a courtship call. Other communication consists of warning signals, vibrating noises, announcing the arrival and the location of any predators. The female thorn bug is known to be incredible in protecting and caregiving, and due to that, many of their children survive early life because of their influence. So if nothing else, we can appreciate that these thorns have a motherly touch. Number 7. Devil's Flower Mantis now, I just talked about one particular flower mantis, and now I'm moving on to another one. But unlike the other flower mantis, the devil's flower mantis takes a more unique approach to the art of camouflage, mainly because it doesn't always have bright colors, but more dull colors like reds and browns in order to make it blend in more naturally to other things. Though at times it can be bright green, blue, and even have black markings on it. It all really depends on what phase of their life that you're seeing them in. When resting, these these colors can't be seen, but when it feels threatened, it's going to raise its body and point its arms upwards, showing the bright colors, and their protrusions are ones that mimic the look of dead leaves, furthering their camouflage even more. Number 6. Brazilian Tree Hopper Take a look now at the Brazilian tree hopper and try to tell me exactly what this bug's deal is, because in truth, I don't fully get it either. As you can see, the very distinctive feature of this bug is its balls. Get your mind out of the gutter, I'm talking about the ones above its head. The tree hopper line, believe it or not, are known for their mimicry, as they like to absorb, if you will, the various looks of other creatures growing horns, wings, and other things. But this one, well, it grew balls on the top of its head. To be fair, they're known as part of its helmet, but why it's grown a helmet at all, no one really knows. Some just think it may be their way of mimicking a fungus, but obviously no one can say for certain. Number five, walking sticks. Now we'll switch things up a bit and talk about an insect species that you definitely know about, but is no less weird, the walking stick because as you hopefully know, these are indeed animals that look like sticks and branches, and they're very good at resembling how still that they can be. And when it comes to size, they can sometimes be over a foot long. So you'll want to make sure that when you pick up a stick, that you're, you know, actually picking up a stick. And while this may seem like a basic form of camouflage, this is a case where simple is better, efficient, and no one can question it. Number four, Atlas Moth. The atlas moth is one of the biggest moths around, having a wingspan of about 10 inches, and that's only the beginning. These moths are so big that it's said that they look like bats in flight and are at times mistaken for them. So if you don't like bats, you're going to want to stay away from these moths. A very curious thing though is that when they're adults, they don't actually eat. With a lifespan of about one to two weeks, they take a risk with every flight as it drains their fat stores from their previous phase of their lives. Some females are even known not to fly at all and just wait for the male of the species to find them so that they can mate. Just as odd, their cocoons are so large that they're apparently used as purses in Taiwan. I can't even begin to make this stuff up, people. Number three, hummingbird moth. 
The hummingbird moth is the common name used for the genus Hemeris, which includes hummingbird hawk moth, sphinx moth, common clear wing hummingbird moth, snowberry clear wing hummingbird moth, five spotted hawk moth, and white lined sphinx. Your life's never going to be the same now, is it? What do all of these bugs have in common? Well, while they are all bugs, they resemble the bird that it's named after, the hummingbird, complete with having wings that flap at incredible speeds, having a long nose to get nectar from flowers, and more. Why does it have the need to mimic a big bird? Well, I'm honestly not sure, but it does a darn good imitation. That cannot be denied. Number 2. Scorpion Fly I took one look at this insect when doing research and went, nope, this is the kind of stuff that will give me nightmares for many years to come. A scorpion fly is a very peculiar kind of insect in various amounts of ways, not the least of which is because it has a scorpion-like tail, though to be clear, it's used for mating rituals and not for hunting or killing. Now I can back that up as these bugs are scavengers. They don't like to kill things on their own. They willingly go after dead insects, try to steal things from spider webs, and even more. They're often found in things like gardens and hedgerows, so you might just have one near your home and not even realize it. Number one, rosy maple moth. I started with a moth, so why not end with one? The rosy maple moth is one that I'm talking about, and I have to admit, it does look almost adorable. Almost, you know, if it wasn't an insect. The rosy maple moth is the smallest of the silk moth species, and as a result of that, they honestly don't have that long of a lifespan. In total, they can live between two to nine months and prefer to reside in maple trees, which is why they got their name. As well as all the yellow and pink coloration that decorates their bodies, and it makes them almost kind to the eyes, showing that sometimes beauty can be found in even the smallest of things. That's all from the realm of insects that will give you nightmares. Were you put on edge by these creepy crawlies and all that they can do? And which of these bugs do you honestly believe isn't as bad as it may seem? Is there another one that should be on this list? Be sure to let me know all about it in the comments section down below. Check out the other cool things that are showing up on the screen, and I'll see you next time.